What's happening, folks? Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It's starting 11 prediction time once again for tomorrow's trip to Dingwall to face Ross County. It's the first post-split fixture of the season. There's five games to go. We need 10 points to secure the title and every game that is left towards that is absolutely massive before we get into it. Today, you'll see a new addition to the studio behind me. It is a wooden Celtic badge. It is a lot better quality than the metal one that I just replaced. Um, I'll link up where you can get that. Below, it's Michael on Instagram at Healing Turning. So I'll link it up. DM Michael, uh, get in touch with him if you want one. And you'll be able to order one on Instagram uh, through DMs. As I say, it's great quality. I'm so impressed with how it looks in the studio. The colour quality is brilliant. Gives that 3D effect much better than the metal cut one as well. So if you want to uh, get one yourself, if you've got a bar or a, a man cave, if you like, if you've got anything like that, um, click the link below, go and find Michael on Instagram uh, and get in touch. Obviously, we come into this game from Sunday's semi-final. It was a defeat in the end. Those those results are always really difficult to take. Um, the performances in those games and the results are magnified. Always, particularly when it's a one-off game like a cup tie where you go out of the competition. But I think the game is really tight. By no means did Celtic play um, at the highest level that, as they have done all season, um, as high a level as we have done at points this season. It wasn't a great performance. It was a bit scrappy, the game. I thought Rangers probably edged it. They won a lot of second balls. They had a bit more energy than us, which was strange given that they had played extra time on Thursday and, and we had a free week. But listen, that's the way the game unfolded. We took the lead um, after a tight opening 60 minutes. And we had a great chance to make it 2-0. And if we did that, we'd probably go on and win the game. But that's football. Um, fine margins. I mean, you miss big chances. If, if you can't keep the team out the other end, then it comes back to bite you. And and as I say, Rangers probably edged it an extra time. But the game could have gone either way. And I think there's just been a wee bit uh, too much uh, magnification of the result and the performance. And the team have been on an unbelievable run. The Celtic uh, squad this season, from where it's come from at the inception of this season to now, to go in that 34 game unbeaten run was incredible. We can't win every game. And I know that sounds like a bit of a cop out, but it just seems like this season, it was too good to be true that we could just go and win a treble. It's far too early in this team's evolution um, to go and have a domestic clean sweep, uh, given given the situation at the start of the season. Um, it was one of those days, a tight game, a scrappy game where we didn't play at our best. And you can lose them at any time, and, and we lost it. So I don't think we need to read too much into that. We've just got to get back uh, on track with this game tomorrow. Difficult one up at Ross County the last time we went there. We needed, obviously, Anthony Valston's 96th or 7th, uh, 96 minutes and 3 seconds. Who could forget that? Um, winner from the header. Absolute scenes at the end. That was a massive game for us. And you think about the journey this season, the turning points, that was huge for us because uh, December was a massive, massive month. And we couldn't have fallen any further behind at that stage. Um, you think about the position we're in now as well. So Ross County haven't lost at home since that game uh, where we managed to beat them. So they've been in good form. They've had a good season, really poor start, rallied, had a great uh, run of form since the turn of the year. Secure top six football, which is massive for them. And they've still got a chance of finishing fourth uh, in a European place, which would be astonishing. So they've had a good season. They're dangerous. Charles Cook, Hungbo. Um, Jordan White up top, they've, they've got uh, players that are suited to their system um, and they can counter-attack and they've got some good results this season. Held Rangers um, up at Dingwall a couple of months back just before they came to Celtic Park. So it's going to be a difficult game for us, but if we can get back to a much better level, a much better level of performance, a much better level of energy uh, than we had last week, then I'm confident we can get the victory and take another step closer to the title. Um, as I say, they're sitting in fifth place just inside that top six, Ross County. I think they've won two of their last uh, five games. They obviously came to Celtic Park a couple of weeks back and we absolutely blew them away in the first half. Uh, Jack Mack has got a hat-trick, rounded it off with the penalty, and I think uh, that day uh, we really, really were far too strong for Ross County. They obviously got a man sent off after the third goal um, and we cruised it that day, so I'll take a performance like that tomorrow, certainly. Um, but we've just got to get back to winning ways and, and take another step towards the title, right? We'll start in goals, as we always do with starting 11 prediction. Obviously, Joe Hart's going to play in there. A few injuries last week, um, sore ones for us, ones that really hurt us in the game. I think the injuries to the fullbacks, 
Juranovic going off. I think Taylor just really cramped up. But the second half extra time, you've got Ralston at left back, Welsh at right back, Forrest in front of him. And I just thought going into that period of the game, as I said in the full time reaction, like that was just really weak, and I thought that would that would pay for us, and it did because the the winning goal comes down that side, and Welsh and Forrest don't get back quickly enough to to stop the cross, and it goes in off Carol Starfield. So I think that killed us. Ralston's going to have to play in this game because I fear that Jananovic is out for the rest of the season. There's only five games left. I think he's maybe, um, I think it was a hamstring, was it? A few people said after the game. I didn't see it back. Um, that's a blow for us because Jananovic has been really good. But Ralston this season has been excellent as well. So um, comes into this game, as I say, off the back of the last trip to Dingwall. He got a huge winning goal for us. So full confidence in him to come in. The the centre-halves will stay the same, obviously. Car- uh, Carter Vickers and Starfelt. Taylor, as I say, I think he just cramped up. He'll play at left back. I worry last weekend that Scales wasn't involved and then all of a sudden we found ourselves in that position where Ralston has to play at left back, Welsh is at right back um, and we look really weak. So that that left back area is a big one for us in the summer. Um, even if you think that, that Greg Taylor is the finished article and he should be the long-term first choice Celtic left back, um, the players behind them just aren't good enough. They're just not a good enough level. Um, and we don't have enough depth there because we ended up in that situation last week and it cost us. Um, but that's what I think the back four will be. The midfield's a big one. Um, not really performing last weekend. I think Hatati and Rogic struggled to get going in the game. Rogic particularly was really, really poor. I think it'll obviously be McGregor in the deeper position. I think we'll see some change. I think in terms of changing it from an attacking point of view, it's quite difficult in there um, because Hatati is the best balance between defence and attack that we've really got. Uh, what we hear about O'Reilly and Rogic um, not being able to play together. They're a wee bit too similar. I've seen that at times this season. So I'm going to go for Turnbull ahead of Callum McGregor. And I'm going to keep Tom Rogic in. I know that flies in the face of what I said um, about his performance last week, but this is what I think the manager will do. I think the manager might keep him in. That, that three of McGregor, Turnbull and Rogic got us through a huge period of the games in the first half of the season. So I think he'll get back to that tomorrow. Um, Hatati, interesting quotes this week about him adapting to life in Scotland to the intensity of the games, playing here, um, and that he struggled. I think he went away with Japan for, for maybe the first time to get his first game. And he talked about having to be in peak physical condition, coming back from the long haul flight. And that's things we don't really see. We talk about it a lot, but none of us as supporters have ever really experienced that that travelling to the other side of the world and back and having to be in fe- uh, peak physical condition for the weekend. Difficult. So I think he just needs a rest and pre-season will do him the order of the good. He'll be an option for the bench. Um, O'Reilly as well, I think, done well when he came on last week. We could see him start. Um, it might be nice to see a combination of Turnbull, Turnbull and O'Reilly because we haven't really seen that very often so far. Um, that is one option the manager could take, but I've just opted for Vogic because um, I think that three in the first half of the season were really, really important for us. On the right-hand side, I think it will be Jota. Uh, got to perform a lot better than he did last week. Again, a lot of overreaction, as there always is in, in social media. Um, it seems like somebody's either the best player in the world and we need to sign them as soon as possible, or they're absolutely rotten and we shouldn't be signing them at any cost. <laughs> um, there was a wee bit of that last week. A few overreactions to Jota's performance. He was poor. Listen, that happens. He, he, he didn't play well in the game. I thought he was wasteful. Him and Abada on both sides, when he got in good positions, they were wasteful. Jota a wee bit predictable coming back onto his right-hand side far too often. Um, so he's got to raise his performance level for these last five games. I have full confidence that he can do that. Um, he's still a major part of how we play going forward and he can be a huge step for us. He's just got to raise that performance level back to where it was a couple of months ago. On the left-hand side, Dyson Maida, who put in great shift the other week there. Uh, sorry, last week against uh, Rangers. Didn't really get much to work with, but I, I think in the first half he closed down really well, which we've come to expect from him. I think he'll play on the left-hand side, and it's a big one through the middle because Yakumakis is back fit. Uh, been training this week. The manager says he's available, so that's him and Kyogo both available. That hasn't happened too often this season. Kyogo came off the bench last week, and I've heard a few people saying he was he was posted missing, he was ineffective um, in the media and such like. I mean, I don't I don't think he was he was that bad at all, really. Um, the team around him, not very good. I know he's been out a long time. He didn't have much to work with. Um, when he did get in dangerous positions, he looked sharp. He won that free kick on the edge of the box where he, he sold goals in a step over and he got took down. Um, free kick in a really good area. He just didn't have a lot of the ball. We didn't 
uh, getting behind Rangers enough to give them stuff to feed off of. Um, I just don't know where the manager's thinking's at with Kyogo because he's been back fit for a few weeks now. Uh, he got 20 minutes against St. Johnson. He got a little bit longer because of the extra time last week, so that should help his sharpness. But I've just got this feeling the manager isn't going to start him tomorrow. I think he's, he's going to go with Yakumakis. Um, and that's because Yakumakis, when he played from the turn of the year, has been excellent and we, we were on such a good one for him. And that that front three, albeit there were some changes in there, we bad out, Maeda and um, really worked for us at times. So I think Yakumakis will come back in tomorrow. It's a funny one with Kyogo because he's, he's been absolutely electrifying when he was fit before the turn of the year. Out for such a long time, but um, was, there's only five games left so I'd like to see him play more often because what are we saving him for um, we're going to finish the season in three or four weeks time and then he's got pre-season there might be some international games in there but I, I don't really know what we're saving him from um, maybe it is just that because the the rhythm the team was playing in without him the manager feels that, that other options are, are, are best I think Yakimakis will start tomorrow that will help us um, we did miss him last week in the two previous games against Rangers that we won the one at Ibrox and the 3-0 game at Celtic Park. He was really, really good. He put in tireless shifts, um, and I think he'll help us tomorrow. So there you go. That's the starting 11 that I think the manager will go with for tomorrow. As I say, it's a massive game. Another three points, hopefully. Another big step towards the title. We need 10 points uh, to secure it. We've got that big derby coming up next week, but we've got to go and win this game tomorrow. Like this video, comment with your own thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you tomorrow after the game. Cheers.